on Crime Watch, we told you about the conviction of a 39-year-old Italian man, Danilo Restivo, for the 2002 murder of mum of two, Heather Barnes. It's a case that we have featured several times over the years, and Crime Watch viewers ended up playing what was a pivotal role in the prosecution's case. Ma? I just looked at Terry and said, I know something's wrong. I don't know where she is, but I think she's in the bathroom. Just opened the bathroom door because it was shut. And, and there she was. In November 2002, Heather Barnett's children came home to find that their mother had been brutally murdered and mutilated in their Bournemouth home. Somebody had hit her numerous times over the head with a hammer and after death had dragged her to another part of the house where he'd mutilated her body. Not only did he bizarrely remove Heather's breasts, but he also uh, clearly had a hair fetish. He'd obviously cut Heather's hair and placed it in her left hand, but in her right hand was somebody else's hair. But it would take nine years of tireless police surveillance, groundbreaking forensic work, and evidence from a shockingly similar murder in Italy before this man, Danilo Restivo, would finally be convicted for his terrible crime. Heather was a kind person. She was very hardworking. She was a seamstress, and I think she just existed to make sure that her children had a great life. So why would anyone want to kill her? Detectives believe the murder had been planned with chilling precision. The killer brought a change of clothes and had been incredibly forensically aware. There was no fingerprints that uh, related to the killer. Uh, we found a number of dark fibres uh, around on Heather's body, on the uh, bathroom door in blood, um, and we were quite convinced that the killer had been wearing gloves at the time. But for all the care the killer had taken, not to leave fingerprints or DNA, he'd left a shoe print in blood. From analysing that uh, shoe print, we were able to establish that the shoe was a Nike Terrapart training shoe of a size 9.5 to 10.5. And, and that's not all he'd left behind. Police found a green hand towel which didn't belong to Heather but had her blood on it. Police were convinced that the suspect was local and would have a connection to Heather and her children. Danilo Restivo lived opposite and was one of the first to be questioned. Uh, he'd been over a couple of days before. He'd asked her to make some curtains. And after that visit, strangely, her keys had gone missing. When he was questioned, Restivo denied any knowledge of the keys, but was quick to provide an alibi for the morning Heather was killed, even though he wasn't a suspect at that stage. Right. And his behavior became even more suspicious when officers found the trainers he'd been wearing that day soaked in bleach. Somebody who was forensically aware would know that that would destroy the, uh, the DNA and remove any traces of the crime scene from those shoes. Was this Restivo covering his tracks and cleaning the trainers he changed into after killing Heather? You know, we wanted to know everything about Danilo Restivo and that led us to Italy and we spoke to the Italian authorities and it revealed a, a past which was deeply concerning to us. Speculation was rife in his hometown of Potenza in Italy that he'd killed teenager Elisa Claps, who went missing in 1993 after arranging to meet Restivo at a local church. But Restivo, seen here in court, denied killing her and without Elisa's body, there simply wasn't enough evidence to convict him of her murder. He was released and subsequently left for the UK. If Restiva had killed Elisa Claps, then he'd gotten away with it. He would have been extremely confident. He would have understood the forensic implications. He would have understood he needed to plan. And was he going to kill again? Detectives were so concerned about what Restivo might do next that they put him under round-the-clock surveillance. It would turn out to be a crucial and potentially life-saving decision. He was in the area of Throop, uh, it's down near uh, an old mill, and it's uh, an area where lone females go and walk their dogs. Restivo had taken an identical set of clothes with him. 
Here he is filmed by undercover officers getting changed and then watching women from the bushes. He was out effectively stalking lone females and his actions were very predatory. But in the end, Restivo seemed to get spooked and went home. So the next day I was back in my office and again there was that phone call from the surveillance team saying, boss, we're really, really worried this time. What's he up to? So I made a decision that, uh, that we would intervene. We still wanted to carry on our COVID tactics. So uh, I sent down a couple of uniform officers to ask him some questions under the pretext that there had been thefts in the area. I stayed on the phone and I knew that they'd approached him. They'd asked to see what was in his bag and what was in his car. Chillingly, they found a large filleting knife. They found two pairs of scissors. They found gloves, balaclava, wipes and tissues. Effectively, his murder bag. Restivo was clearly a danger to the public, but the police took the decision to seize his murder kit and to let him go while they continued their covert surveillance. He would be watched very closely while officers searched for a direct link between Restivo's disturbing behaviour and Heather's death. Clearly the killer had a hair fetish. Local people started to tell us that women had had their hair cut whilst travelling on buses in Bournemouth. I was convinced it was the same person. Detectives were sure that the hair fetish would be a crucial part of the inquiry and wanted to reach out to as many potential victims as possible. And you're pretty sure he knew Heather, which means he was probably local. Tell us about this fascination you had with, with hair. This is as heavy as a telephone directory. These are the calls that have come in tonight on the killer of Heather Barnett. Two women came forward to say they'd had their hair cut. Uh, and a further lady came forward to say that she'd observed somebody having their hair cut and she would later identify Restivo as the person that had cut that hair. A viewer also called in to say that she recognised this man shown on grainy CCTV walking away from Capstone Road where Heather lived around the time she was killed. She said it was Danilo Restivo. This previously unseen crime watch footage shows the moment Restivo was arrested and questioned about the hair cutting assaults in November 2006. But it would be another three years before breakthroughs in forensics would mean they could charge him with Heather's murder. I was always waiting for that call for someone to tell me that uh, you know, the offender's DNA had been found on the towel um, and eventually it did. Scientists using a new technique had been able to extract a partial profile of the killer, and it was a positive match to Restivo, with a one in 57,000 chance of it belonging to anyone else. He'd taken that towel with him um, to wipe Heather's blood from his hands. Everything else had been, he thought, meticulously planned, but he'd left one thing behind. When Restivo was questioned, he stuck with the story that he had taken the towel over to Heather as a color match for the curtains. No one believed him, and when a new technique was used to examine his bleached trainers, more damning evidence came to light. Almost immediately that the scientist uh, sprayed the inner sole of these trainers with the chemical, it came up purple, which really showed that Restivo had put blood-stained feet into those shoes. Then, in March 2010, another piece of the puzzle fell into place. Italian police, who'd been conducting a review of the Elisa Klapps case, finally found her body, mummified in the roof of the Italian church where she'd gone to meet Restivo 17 years previously. We believe that Daniela Restivo had uh, taken Alicia Klapps into that roof space, um, sexually assaulted her, brutally stabbed her, and uh, during that process had uh, cut her hair very similar acts that had occurred during Heather's murder. In May last year, with now convincing forensics and special permission to use the new evidence from the reopened Italian investigation, the police again arrested Restivo, this time for murder. During the trial, Restivo finally admitted that he got a hair fetish. There he was in the court, facing the jury, saying, yes, I'm a weirdo, I like cutting hair. I get some sort of gratification from it. The jury returned a unanimous verdict after just five hours. He was jailed for life for Heather's murder.
the judge made it clear that he was sentencing Restivo as if he'd killed before. You know, he's a, a brutal individual I don't think will ever get into his mind. Unfortunately, we weren't able to prevent Heather Barnett's murder, but we did prevent further murders, and uh, Daniel Restivo is in the right place for the rest of his life. Uh, Matthew, Heather's children were 11 and 14 when they found her body. Yeah, the murder, the mutilation, the way that Restivo had almost designed the crime scene so that Heather would be found by her children, it, it's beyond belief. In her victim impact statement, Heather's daughter, Caitlin, described the nightmares, the flashbacks that she suffered, and said it was several years before she could accept the help of a child psychologist to help her cope with what she'd seen and what had happened. And the hair, so odd. Yes, he was a sadist, a sexual predator, and the hair thing was all part of that. When detectives searched his house, they found clumps of hair hidden in his wardrobe. I mean, he was a time bomb. The police recognised that. That surveillance operation that you saw probably saved the lives of other women. But the, the science here was absolutely crucial mm. because Restivo was incredibly forensically aware, but he had no idea how those techniques would develop and ultimately trap him just years later. And what about this poor young girl, Elisa, in Italy, the mummified body in the church? Well, the Italians want to put him on trial for that murder. The extradition proceedings have already started. I mean, everything about this case is grim, apart from the fact that they caught him and that he'll never be released from prison. And also one thing that Caitlin said, she said that she refused to just sit there and be sad, and she and her brother Terry were determined to grab every opportunity in life and be adults that their mum would be proud of. So Restivo took virtually everything that was precious from them, but not their strength and not their spirit. We wish them all the best in that, Matthew. Thank you very much.